think it's really, I mean, spending your dollars where consumers are spending their attention. Whether that's, I mean, how much, it's four hours a day, the average, like the prolific Facebook users. Dealerships in particular, I mean, they've come around the bend, but they've been slow on the uptake, yeah. you know, with, yeah. with content, uh, Instagram. Mm -hmm. I mean, even to this day, if I walk into a dealership and say, what's your Instagram strategy? It's kind of a little bit of a foreign look. Yeah. The reality is you've got consumers spending their time. You want to talk to millennials. You don't want cars to go away and millennials not to care about getting a driver's license. Mm -hmm. Well, then we need to speak to them the way they want to be spoken to yeah. or just generate the content. You know, for me, there's a couple of hot buttons and it's like back to the basics in some ways. Mm -hmm. For one, I have two things. One, I'd start with. All right, welcome to the Sales Wolves Podcast. This is episode 52. Uh, I am Tyler Harris. We've got two special guests here. We've got Robert Donovan and Ryan Alford, and we are the Sales Wolves. Uh, -hoo -hoo. That's right. It's not awkward at all in this quiet office <laughs> building for that how to go off, but this is episode 52. Uh, I'm super excited to have these guys here, which they will introduce themselves. Uh, here in just a second, but just to give you a quick reminder of why in the world we do this podcast uh, for two reasons. Number one is to show support and appreciation for salespeople because we know sales is a very lonely road sometimes. And uh, you go through the ups and downs, the roller coasters of those sales cycles. And a lot of times you just need someone to pat you on the back saying you're doing, <laughs> you're doing a good job, or at least to be able to have someone that says, hey, I've been there. I know it sucks. Um, so that's why we do this. And we, have a, we are of the opinion that every single person on this planet is a salesperson. You're either selling yourself or you're selling to yourself on what you need to do every day. And so that's our first main priority uh, is to show you guys support and appreciation. And the second is to actually give you some tangible, real tips, advice, uh, stuff that you can actually take, go implement, whether that's implemented into your business or implement into your regular everyday life, uh, but something that you can take from this and, and uh, implement and have it make an impact uh, on your life. And so that's the two reasons why we do this. Now, we do have two special guests here, and the reason for that, we've got uh, an event coming up uh, this week called Agent 2021. I still don't actually know what that means. Do you guys know what that actually means? I mean, it's three years from now. You know, I was doing my content research and it seems like Gary or someone at Vayner did something like, we should be talking about what content and marketing should, would be like in 2021 and not 2017 or yeah. something. Yeah. That was the most I could find. But, I mean, uh, you would think there would have been some piece of content that would have come out. Yeah, right. Like, exactly. this, is why, this is where we got the name, but. Yeah. So that's three coming year up. Three-year plan. Three year <laughs> yeah, plan. It's a three-year, <laughs> it is now a three-year plan uh, to get these uh, organizations uh, marketing in today's time. So. With that, I wanted to bring these guys on. They're going to be down at the event. Uh, we're going to be there as well. We're going to be vlogging the entire deal. Um, TJ, who's over to our uh, to my right, your left, who's going to be filming the entire event all day long. We can get him in here. There he is. <laughs> and uh, they're going to be down there. They're they're going to be um, heading up um, one of the panels down there. Uh, is that, that's going to be for the automotive industry, yep. right? And so this event is specifically targeted for uh, real estate, insurance. Automotive and travel, I guess, are kind of the four uh, demos that they're going to be uh, uh, really targeting. And the goal of the event is to get p people to where they are marketing like the year that we live in, or apparently in how we need to live in 2021, uh, not like it's 1985, which traditionally automotive, um, real estate, insurance, and travel are probably more guilty of that than anybody. Yeah. Uh, so I want to let these guys introduce themselves individually and then they can talk a little bit about uh, their company and then why they are going to be speaking at this event and then we're just kind of go back and forth on that. Uh, but appreciate you guys being here for sure. Oh, thanks so much. Thanks for having us. Yeah, yeah. appreciate it. So let's start with you. Who are you? Hey, I'm Ryan <laughs> Halford. <laughs> Tower and I go back a while. Uh, I think we're connected through our ex-wives. <laughs> we can edit that out if needed. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I'm the CMO of Dom360 and Donovan and Contology. We have three brands. It's not as confusing as it sounds. We're an ad agency. 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, the power of three, as we like to say. That's right. Uh, we do. We started. Robert is the CEO. Started the company ten years ago as a digital agency for automotive. Uh, we focus in the tier three dealership space. Uh, we ventured into corporate agreements, but our bread and butter is in the automotive space. Okay. Uh, and Donovan is, an, is our non-automotive ad agency. And then we use a technology product that we developed called Catology, that we'll talk a little bit more. It's a marketing cloud uh, that we developed. And but, you've got uh, an automotive background and a marketing background. So yeah, it's kind of perfect, exactly. perfect blend. It came together. Robert and I <laughs> met about 18 months ago, and uh, it's a good marriage. I have. 15 years in the ad agency business, managing some of the largest brands in the country, um, largest of which being Verizon Wireless, who's uh, one of the, spends about a billion dollars a year in, in advertising still. Uh, worked in Manhattan uh, through Hill Holiday at Ir and Irwin Penland. Uh, so large agency networks working on large clients and actually got out of that and then did the startup realm in the automotive space, started iDrive, which is, before it's time, everyone's talking digital retail now, uh, but about five years ago, a business partner and I concepted the notion of custom ordering pre-owned cars online. Okay. Uh, there's a company called Caravana who's doing it great now. <laughs> Got a little more backing than us, but we love that idea. Yeah. Um, did that for about three and a half years, was successful. We did seven figures uh, our first year. It really took off. Uh, I think over the three years, I learned I was a marketer first and a car operator seventh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so learned a lot, but met Robert, and uh, he was looking for some support in the on the agency side. So we put our heads together and been with Dom and and Donovan for about uh, about fourteen, fifteen months now, and it's been great. We're growing a lot, and uh, you know Robert's given me a great platform, and you know we've seen really great success working together, and awesome. you know so. Happy to be here. So tell everybody a little bit about kind of your background, where you came from, and, and how sure. you got to Greenville, and, and what you're doing now. Well, we're uh, we're Gary V disciples, right? So we're all about the <laughs> hustle. Yes. Uh, I remember. Uh, getting a paper route at age 11, and that was the afternoon route, and I uh, grew that from 40-something papers up in the 70, and eventually got the morning route too, and so I went through the same neighborhood twice. I've sold all my customers wind, uh, windshield washing <laughs> and cleaning the garage, raking leaves, whatever the case may be, managed the pizzeria by the time I was 16, and was ordering all the food, did all the uh, schedules, and ran the kitchen, and. Uh, from there, I, I went in the Marine Corps, and uh, that was great. It was great. Finished college after that, and uh, was kind of like, what's next? And got a job at an ad agency in the Beltway, working for a big political agency, at Ronald Reagan's old agency, and that was uh, that was eye-opening. And I think that uh, a lot of things came easy to me. I mean, I, I worked so hard that it, for me it was easy, and advertising didn't come that easy. Okay. So it was a challenge and I really liked it and uh, went and focused on automotive at another agency in, uh, in South Florida. And then I saw this digital tidal wave coming and uh, the agency really didn't want to listen to uh, my proposals to evolve. So about 10 years ago, came up here to Greenville and the rest is history. So, yeah. That's awesome. So I think kind of a good first topic for us to go into, and we'll get to the, to the actual event um, here in a minute, but Let's talk about what you just said. So you saw this wave of digital marketing coming. Mm -hmm. To me, that's that's so incredible because I mean that's what Gary always talks about being able to see these trends before they're actually happening, or before it's actually uh, popular enough to where people are are using it on a large scale. Mm -hmm. um, what did that look? What did that wave look like to you? What were some of those? Um, signs that you started seeing pop up that said, hey, maybe we need to go in this direction and, and make a career out of this? It was little nibbles. Uh, my average client spent 50 to 100 grand a month with me, sometimes 300 grand, but it was replacing some of the traditional marketing with a little piece of digital and a little piece of digital. And I was like, the agency was making so much money that I was at and they didn't really, they weren't concerned about that. But I was like, wait a minute, this is a crack in the armor mm -hmm. and there's something to be had here. And it was fertile ground. Yeah. It was like, you could do little things. I remember we had a, a product at the agency and I got authorization to spend five five thousand bucks to to build a website. Man, I'm, I made a couple million dollars with that website. It was so it was so easy. It was fertile ground, and and so I'm like, there's more here, and and they weren't having it, so I, I had to go out and do it. So when you said that they were they were spending a little bit here and there on the digital side, were they they were doing that somewhere else? They were doing it outside of gotcha. us because we didn't have the capabilities. Gotcha. 
Okay. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. So, and, and that's, that's kind of what um, Gary always talks about too, is he talks about these clients that they have and a lot of marketing agencies, I think, are making the mistake of like forcing it down clients or potential clients' throats. Like you have to do this, you have to go hard on Facebook and Instagram, you have to do this, and trying to get them to change their entire realm of belief that they've had up until that point versus, hey, let's do what you wanna do, but let's add a little bit of this. Right. And let's see how that works in comparison to it. And then let's add a little bit more, and then a little bit more, and then a little bit more, but so many people right now, it seems like, are coming in, they're saying, okay, what's your current marketing plan? All right, let's take that off the table. Here's what yeah. we're actually gonna do. And they're like, no, we're not gonna do that. No. But going in a little bit at a time seems to be the, the way to do it. I think clients have, uh, you know, they figured it out. I mean, digital's no secret any longer, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, we talk about it all the time with our clients, it's a cocktail. Every yeah. client and every business needs a cocktail of marketing. And now it's really figuring out and looking at the customer where, where that customer, where that persona is spending their time and building a marketing mix around that, you know, and not going, you know, we're trying to lose, even within our own walls, the vernacular of traditional and digital. It's more just figuring out what is that mix and that blend of things. There might be a little social media, a little television, a little website optimization. Mm -hmm. It's all a cocktail that you have to blend and continually shake and stir <laughs> and uh, adjust yeah. depending on the client. Yeah. And, well, you didn't start with uh, when you were a kid and you were you're sneaking your first alcoholic beverage. I mean, it, it wasn't a hundred year old bottle of Bordeaux, right? Keep it real with some Gary, some Gary yeah, vernacular right. here. Yeah. I mean, you were sneaking a natty light, right? And, and that was it, yeah. you know. But then your palate develops and and you, you have a little bit of a tolerance or whatever. And then before you know it, you're drinking the twenty year old Scotch, right? I mean, it's kind of like that. Absolutely. So you mentioned that you were working you were working for a marketing agency that you, I guess, started focusing on, on the automotive side. Correct. And so then you made the step into full-time just focusing in on automotive when you started your own agency? Is that how that worked? Well, the, I was in the automotive division of a, of a publicly held company. Okay. So that okay. was the way that that went. And uh, it was, um, it was it was a good ride for a long time. I mean, we, we had it down. I mean, with, with Reagan deregulating all the banks in the 80s, the 90s were just like a free-for-all. But then that, that road started to come to an end with the housing crisis because basically the housing crisis was, you know, you owe more than your car's worth or whatever. And they, people were doing the same type of thing uh, and getting upside down with their house and doing all these adjustable rate mortgages and stuff. And, and that was the culmination of the end, in my opinion, of straight up traditional advertising. Mm -hmm. So. so what was your background as far as the, on the automotive side? Was that a passion of yours? Was that an interest of yours before going into that on the marketing side? You know, I I, it, it, I kind of fell into that one. Um, I think the uh, after White space money, right? Well, after <laughs> after doing the building political candidates, five hundred one c threes and and super PACs, uh, I pretty much wanted to vomit in my mouth after a couple of years. I mean, no one, nothing against anybody that does that. I'm just not into yeah. politics. So sure. you know, cars were great. It was tangible. Mm -hmm. You know, you could you could actually feel good. I like to work with my hands in the off time. Ryan and I go to the shop or whatever. Yeah. You know, build something out of metal or work on the motorcycles or whatever but uh, you know it's nice because you you can see the finished product and and with automotive you could like you could actually see the results it was nice it wasn't just like oh here's a branding campaign it's awareness it was like there was hardcore retail going on yeah. and that, that to me that's that speaks to me because I'm a in my day-to-day -day, I'm a transactional guy and I, yeah. I love the fact that you can implement a marketing effort and then actually see in the number of cars sold like it, it, right. there's so many where you're right like it is this intangible goodwill like branding awareness where it's like hey we spent x amount on the digital side what did what was the return on that and sometimes yeah. sometimes it's so hard uh, to get that but i think a lot of what they're i'm assuming they're going to be talking about at this event uh this week is compared to what like compared to your traditional advertising that people are doing like how, well how do you how do you how do you get the return on that magazine or that billboard or that this and this and that and that? So it's the same problems that people have with traditional advertising as they're doing with digital marketing I mean, yeah. at the end of the day. I think it's really, I mean, the setup that I've read and what I see this as is spending your dollars where consumers are spending their attention. Yeah. Yeah. And so 
whether that's, I mean, how much, it's four hours a day, the average, like the prolific Facebook users. I mean, I you know, Facebook. Like <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, four so, hours yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. I like that. <laughs> I'm going to write that down. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't know how that yeah. works, but yeah, it feels exactly. like. But there's, but there's been yeah. there a time here, and, you know, dealerships in particular, I mean, they've come around the bend, you know, but they've been slow on the uptake, yeah. you know, with, yeah. with content. Uh, Instagram. Mm -hmm. I mean, even to this day, if I walk into a dealership and say, what's your Instagram strategy? It's kind of a little bit of a foreign look. Yeah. And the reality is you've got consumers spending their time. You want to talk to millennials. You don't want cars to go away and millennials not to care about getting a driver's license. Mm -hmm. Well, then we need to speak to them the way they want to be spoken to yeah. or just generate the content. Yeah. And so it's still, you know, a little bit of a challenge today, um, getting the dealers to really think in that mindset and to want to invest the dollars, yeah. you know, because it is tangible. Back, you know, 10 years ago, you throw a thousand dollars in, in AdWords, mm -hmm. you'd have tangible leads yeah. immediately. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now you've got, you can do that, but you've got to pull more than just one lever. Yeah. You've got to really hit a lot of different levers back to kind of that cocktail analogy. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot of different things. And I think the, the conference should really bear to light for a lot of these industries, you know, where, where are those attention points that, that these industries need to be focusing? And, you know, it's not going to happen. It's not like we're going to take, you know, 100% of the budget and, and drop it immediately in Facebook and yeah. Instagram. But you've got to start dabbling a little bit in these mediums. And maybe that's the 2021 strategy. Maybe it's, hey, yeah. let's take this next three years and let's start progressively, progressively, progressively going more uh, on the digital side. So what's... What's y'all's involvement with the event? What are you guys going to be? You guys are having a panel, is that right? So we're, I have a panel. Uh, we got some pretty heavy hitters on there. We have a guy pretty high up at Google, a guy pretty high up at Oracle, a couple of industry leaders. And uh, I think it's, it's more big picture, right? There's a, there's a lot of snake oil out there. I mean, you could, you could munch your whole ad budget, your whole strategy, uh, and dilute it to the point of inefficiency, right? And I think our session, uh, focusing on big data and how you can best utilize that for your business, this is, uh, this is gonna give you that overarching strategy, what's gonna work, what's working now, what's gonna work in 2021, uh, and, and then it'll be up to you, now that you are armed with that information to select the right vendors to get that done. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, just looking at who's speaking and, and the various industries, I think you're gonna walk away with a great overall, okay, here's my strategic areas of focus for, for marketing or operations or whatever the case may be. And you're gonna go back and be able to formulate your individual battle plan, but you'll know and be able to look and say, okay, that's snake oil. I don't need that, you know, but I do need this. And, you know, here's who I'm going to go with, with that. What other, what other speakers are coming from the automotive industry? Are there any other? Yeah. Um, there's a, there's a, we got a Paul good Potras. list. Paul, Paul yeah. Potras, he's another one of those, uh, you know, early digital agencies, uh, a little bit earlier than me actually. And, uh, He's, uh, he's really good, he's knowledgeable, he has a great agency up in New York, and uh, Gary V. Disciple as well, and uh, I think he'll be there. Um, there's gonna be a lot, there's gonna be a couple, couple the, of good ones. The um, CEO of GoGo -Go Car yep. that we met with yep. uh, a couple weeks ago. Yep. Um, he's gonna be there, GoGo -Go Car. Christopher uh, Vester. Christopher yep. Vester, yep. really nice guy, really good guy. He's gonna be on Robert's panel. Okay. He's GoGo -Go Car is, uh, platform for digital retail online for new cars. Okay. And they're actually kind of far, they're way out there um, as far as having the integrations with buying, transacting the entire purchase online. Yeah. And so he, he actually owns a, a network of dealers, but then uh, also started the platform. So a lot of people that watch this podcast are in sales. Right. And we found that a lot of them are car salesmen. Right. Um, wow. what, are, what are some tangible advice that you could give someone that works for a dealership and maybe that dealership hasn't bought in completely to the whole 2021 mm -hmm. uh, marketing strategies, but that salesperson has 100% bought in and they know exactly where the eyeballs are and they know the things that their dealership should be doing, but maybe they can start doing at a smaller level. What would you tell that salesperson that they could start doing as an individual salesman to bring or salesperson to bring uh, people into the dealership to see them? Well, yeah, go ahead. I, yeah. I'll go after you. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a, a lot of approaches, and I think it, it depends on the, on the dealership. But 
you know, for me, there's a couple of hot buttons and it's like back to the basics in some ways. Mm -hmm. For one, I have two things. One, I'd start with, it's no longer, and I think about this in our own, I'm in sales. I do business development for the agency. Yeah. And in many ways, you know, there used to be B2B and B2C and all that. It's really B2H. It's business to human. Mm -hmm. And that's what I tell salespeople and that's what I tell uh, the dealers that we talk to is you're talking about human beings and their human beings are spending their attention and their time in different places. And you need to be in those places. But this is where that's kind of like a forward thinking thing. The back one is more CRM. Customer relationship management has never been more important. You can garner and, you know, Robert shared a book with me that was like really navigating your base and generating business from your customer base. That has been never been more true. Yeah. And if salespeople can really nurture their customer base uh, with reviews, uh, with word of mouth, I mean, it, there's some just tried and true tactics and mm -hmm. things that can happen. But use the mediums that are at our hand. You've got Facebook Messenger, you've got Instagram, you've got all of these platforms. As Gary says, we've never been more empowered. Yeah, and sure. so the dealer doesn't know how empowered they are to reach these customers in ways and nurture that base and it will bear fruit with developing uh, your sales cycle. It's interesting you say that. So it seems to me, and this is a, this is a large assumption, but it seems to me that the car salesman position, the car salesman position is a pretty high turnover, and so that not as long of uh, not as long the longevity of someone in that career maybe not be as long as the other a random sales position somewhere else. But I know, and I've met tons of car salesmen that, for example, a guy that's been with Mercedes Benz for 19 years and makes an insane living, does incredibly <laughs> well. But then you've got the people that are just doing that in the meantime while they're waiting for another opportunity or they're doing it because they it was the only thing that they could get at that time or something like that and it seems like there's not this long-term strategy so they're maybe not willing to go all in on building their own personal brand around what they do because of the fact that it's not long term but if they knew that by doing that they could create a career in what they are right yeah. now yeah. that would be in i mean you can make so much money if you do it the right way yeah. um, especially if you're connected with the right dealership and it seems like a lot of these strategies the ones that make sense it's for someone that's like that's their long term career it's not someone that's just punching in at a job and, yeah. and is waiting for the next opportunity to, to come on board, it seems. Um, so yeah. what, what would your advice be? And that was awesome advice there. Uh, what would your advice be to that, that salesman that's looking to get more people through the door that are hey, saying, hey, I want to talk to Tyler. Is Tyler here? Well, the key sales indicators now, I mean, it's, it's, you got to focus on your inventory. And sometimes if you're, if you're not in a position to, to order cars or to buy cars, then, you know, you're at a slight disadvantage, but the, we see people driving six hours for a specific used car or, or people calling a dealership to make sure that that exact color and trim level is there before they show up. So, uh, that's really the the key of it now is make sure that you know you have a good process on the heels of the crm i mean building that personal brand and making sure the dealership that you work for has good inventory because sometimes it's a situation where the they're not going to have good inventory for years because they haven't earned it there's this turn and earn type of thing and uh so i think those are the big things now and and some of those old indicators like uh TOing the customer to the manager. I mean, that that's kind of like out the window now. Like, <laughs> like it doesn't matter anymore yeah. in, the, in this internet age. So yeah, definitely building that brand. I mean, Facebook is, is, is probably, I don't, I don't quite think that the, you know, that 35 and above, you know, to 60 year old is really on Instagram or, you know, definitely not on Snapchat, but like they're on Facebook, yeah. right? So, and we've seen it. We've seen people go from, you know, 10, 15 cars a month, you know, to selling 35 cars a month and that's it. Like, I mean, and they're, they're just building their Facebook brand and, and that's probably one of the best mediums right now uh, that I would do if I was in that position. The last thing I would add, yeah. you know, like if the theme is, and I think it's universal when I think about it. So it's de car dealers, uh, anyone that sales remove friction. Yeah. The path to purchase has never been more direct, but it's also never been more complicated mm. because there's so many right. channels. And if, if a salesperson or an organization will remove friction, for dealers, 
If a customer wants to buy online, let them buy online. If they want to buy in the store, let them buy in the store. If they want to be in and out in an hour, let them out in and out in an hour. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so whatever you're doing, whatever you're selling, if you can make it more convenient, less friction, you will sell more, period. And it's interesting you said because Gary always talks about with Uber and these other businesses that they're selling time. They're not selling a, a car right. or a rental Absolutely. or a, a, um, a cab. You know, they're selling time. Yeah. That's what you're talking about is, yeah. is eliminating it to where... How many more hours am I going to give you back exactly. today? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know? And I loved how you said business to human because I think that's one of the biggest keys in building a brand is that, I always use this phrase, real recognizes real, but it, people want to connect with other people. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're not going to connect with a business, but they'll connect with a human being that represents that business, especially if they can have a branding strategy that gets to know who those individuals are. Yeah. Uh, and so to me, like for a salesperson in the automotive industry, for them to start building their own personal brand to where they're the expert, if you need to know anything about BMWs, I'm the guy to come to. And I, maybe maybe that's starting a podcast where you just yep. talk about BMWs. Exactly. And there may be nobody that listens for six months. And it's probably going to be nobody that listens for yeah, six months. It takes time. But by doing stuff like that and putting that type of content out there, doing little Facebook Lives while you're at the dealership, just talking about certain cars and the features on it and building those... Um, building that content to where when people go online they're seeing you and you're always talking about something you become this expert in their mind to where there's people that i know in greenville that i consider them if somebody asked me hey you, you need to know something about this oh i know this guy he's, he's like the expert in that i don't really know if he's the expert in that or not i just <laughs> see him post about it all the time so i assume he is right but you yeah. become this like expert in people's minds to where they're if anything comes up regards to BMW that they know that, hey, you should probably go talk to Ryan because he's the, the BMW guy. Yeah. And I have the key PI for that, What's the that? key performance indicator. And I've seen this at multiple dealerships where salesmen have just built an amazing brand around themselves. Let's just say, for instance, they didn't have the exact car and they couldn't get it, right? Mm -hmm. And that customer comes back and says, I know that you were supposed to get a commission here's $200 mm -hmm. or here's something. Yeah. They didn't even buy the car from them. Yeah. You know that you've won in the personal brand yeah. industry when you have received those types of compliments. It's amazing. And if you think of the long term, if, you're, if you are in it for a long term career and you think of the long term value of that, that type of customer, yeah. right. potential customer and the referrals that they'll bring in and the word of mouth that they're gonna spread about you, like that's, that's at the end of the day how you win in that, in that game. So let's talk a little bit more um, about the event. What's something that you guys are looking forward to uh, at the event? I mean, obviously Gary's gonna be speaking, that's always good. My biggest, I mean, is always networking. Yeah. You know, like, in, you know, we're, we're building business in and out of automotive. So, you know, whether it's insurance or travel, you know, networking with like-minded people. So I think people that are going to this are of like mind. Yeah. You know, that's and it wasn't the, a cheap. It wasn't a cheap event. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't a cheap date. No. <laughs> we, yeah. we sent it to some clients, and uh, they're like, "Not a cheap date." Yeah. And I'm like, "Well, most most good dates aren't." Yeah. So I'm I'm looking forward to the networking, uh, the who's who of speakers. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's there's a lot and. You know, getting a chance to see Gary, uh, you know, again, I've seen him a number of times, but yeah. he always brings brings the heat. So, yeah. um, just networking. So yeah. let's let's talk real quick and kind of pivot towards your your other brand um, that you said is not in the automotive yeah. uh, space. Is that something that's new, or is that something that's always been kind of running alongside uh, the current business as well? Well, we hedged our bet uh, at the end of 2016 and, and opened up andonovan.com and uh, it was to specifically make a conscious effort to take some of this business that we typically wouldn't take. We, we get all kinds of leads all the time that are non-automotive, so we were a little picky and we found a little niche uh, in the QSR, quick serve restaurants and uh, fast casual restaurants. Uh, we found another one in health and lifestyle and we've been able to do some amazing things. Uh, we just launched this website a couple of months ago. They were getting less than 300 online orders, okay? We, they had 50, fran between 50 franchises, they got less than 300 online orders, okay? We turned it on for three of the 50, and they went from 300 to over 3,000. I mean, it was amazing. It was amazing. So, you know, we've been in the trenches just doing it, doing it, doing it in automotive, and all of that DNA that our people 
people now have, it's, it's almost like uh, quick and easy again, uh, mm -hmm. where we started 10 years ago, like Ryan was saying with the AdWords, where it was mm -hmm. so easy. It's almost easy because we're doing it in these other categories now. Makes sense. Yeah. It's almost like it seems as though you, it, when you get so good in a particular industry, especially one that I would imagine is pretty commoditized yeah. um, in the products that they're, that they're selling, when you can take the expertise to be able to get those businesses to stand apart from, from their competitors and then take that into something that's not as commoditized, it seems like that's going to be just through the roof. What? Yeah. It, tell me a little bit more about so the health and lifestyle. You said health and lifestyle. Yeah, we've got two gyms that we work with. Okay. I won't name yeah, yeah. clients yeah. for whatever reason, but uh, we've got two gyms that we work with. One that's uh, actually a national brand, okay. uh, high intensity fitness. It's on the higher end yeah. of uh, monthly, mm -hmm. and then we've got one on the lower end uh, that plays. And really, that's how the gym space is working yeah. out. If yeah. you're stuck in the middle, you're dead. <laughs> you know, so you got to be on the lower, the high. So we're yeah. helping both of them. Uh, we're doing content for the high-end gym, okay. uh, and then more uh, uh, full service for the other website yeah. uh, to digital engagement. To, we, we, we did some TV ads, I mean, we're full service. Yeah. You know, we started digital, we have digital DNA. As Robert said, it's interesting, you know, having come from more of a traditional agency, yeah. uh, even today, the bigger agencies hire a couple digital people, they call themselves full service, yeah. but <laughs> it, it's a little more difficult than that. You know, yeah. Robert was, was wise beyond his years, you know, 10 years ago, starting digital. Mm -hmm. We've been able to step back and to do, and it's really what I call content development. I mean, it's broadcast, we yeah. do broadcast, and mm -hmm. TV's not dead, uh, no matter what, what the, the pundits say. Mm -hmm. uh, but. We can do a little bit of both, but we do the, the gym and fitness space. We do restaurants, uh, fast casual, yeah. which is still a growing segment. Yeah. The restaurant industry as a whole had a down year, uh, but our uh, client in that space actually is up just a hair. So uh, they were they saw that as a win. So. And is that split between the two offices where there's all three going on at each office, or is there one particular other office that does more of of that than than the automotive or? We have uh, media, and you know both offices are full service capable. Okay. But we do some, so you have some media planning that happens in Florida. Okay. Uh, so we do spread it out. But it's, I would say, the Andonovan business is ninety percent run out of Greenville. Okay. Um, our creative director and myself both have not a lot of non-automotive, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, bigger brand experience. So we do a lot of uh, the strategic development and working with the clients directly on from the Greenville office but we have some uh, some of the services and categories whether that's media or digital or something we'll, we'll, we'll utilize whoever that knowledge expert is depending yeah. across the office and we've seen some good success in the alcohol space as well okay. have a craft beer brand uh, out of uh, the Atlanta area okay. and that's been a, just a booming business yeah, with all absolutely. the craft taken off so yeah, yeah. so you caught on to that the wave of digital early early on <laughs> obviously it's even more fun to catch on to the next one uh do you have any ideas on kind of what's coming in the next in the next 10 years it's already you, here it, it is. is it's already here all right let's just take the example of qr codes yeah all right the, gosh how old are those things <laughs> 15 years old mm -hmm. right how you know so you, if you look at the Rogers adoption curve and you just apply it you got your, your your early adopters here at the bottom of the bell curve your early majority and then you go over the curve you got your late majority and then your laggards it's the same with with technology so the technology that's tomorrow's technology has already been invented the, it's all there it's just a matter of when is it when is the market going to be ready yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. So you really just have to be in it. And when just like Gary says, when there's a new app or whatever, you know, you just you dive into it and say, OK, yeah, I know all about that now. Whether or not I have it, I have it in my brain and I can put it on the shelf for now and pull it off when I have it. Yeah. So it's already here. You just got to figure out when it's going to be right. And that's it's you're so right. And that's what he's been talking so much lately about VR and AR. It's yeah. like it's not here yet to consumer. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but but going at it and, and seeing what can we invest in now so that when it does become uh, consumer, uh, when, when the, the average consumer is using it on right. a daily basis where you're so far ahead of the curve. And it's so funny to me that concept and, and you mentioned it, you know, when these new platforms, these new social media platforms come out and these new technologies come out and and people talk about like, I don't have time, you know, I, you know yeah. who has all the time to do all this stuff? and. 
I always love to turn it back to him like, well, who has time not to? Like, <laughs> what if right. one of those is the next biggest thing and you're the yeah. early, like you said, the early adopter on that platform? I mean, it's what Gary's done with everything. It's right. what a lot of people like that Carlos Gill that I was um, rec- um, mentioning earlier that's going to be down at Agent 2021. He's speaking. You know, he got on Snapchat real early and now he speaks all over the world about Snapchat, yeah. uh, which is crazy to me that even that even exists <laughs> for someone to go talk around the world about Snapchat, but it does. And they've done, uh, he's done an incredible uh, job with it but that amount of time spent on these new technologies and these new platforms like yeah you may six months down the road be like oh that was a waste of time but what if it wasn't yeah, like right. what if that's the one that hits and you were one of those early adopters and you're able to capture that gigantic audience and that's what everybody wants to have they yeah. just don't want to do all that work on the 50 other platforms that they tried and didn't work out to be on the one that actually does well who run. are the best facebook livers right the people who do this right these are the people that early adopted periscope right exactly. i mean where's periscope i don't even yeah. know right <laughs> all that stuff i was actually one of our uh, one of our friends um, he was on like the initial kind of launch team of meerkat and we were talking to him up in uh, Newark a guy by the name of Jeff Castillo and he was talking about kind of when everything kind of shook out with the way Periscope kind of led the charge on that but then as soon as he said that I was like well I haven't heard anybody on Periscope lately. I did a radio show two weeks ago, and they were like, yeah, we're live on Facebook, on this XM station, and Periscope. I'm like, do people watch it? Like, do people watch it? Like, do people watch it on there? I'm like, that's I mean, that's it's cool. But uh, but yeah, you're exactly you're exactly right. And who knows what that's going to be five years from now, ten years from now. But the only way to actually capitalize on it is to try everything between now and then and right? see what happens. I think I have to temper myself a bit because I mean I'm not I don't I don't consider myself Mr. Innovation, but. You know, I've been looking and researching chatbots and thinking about you know, them for a couple of years. Mm. And now, even if you walk down the street right now and ask 10 people what chatbots are, yeah. one would know what they are. Yeah. So I think we have, there's a danger now of this quick turn with the technology, with an AI, and everybody's like, well, you know, my mom said AI the other day. You know, like, I'm like, uh, you know, <laughs> this is a yeah, yeah. cryptocurrency, you know, like, can I pay with cryptocurrency in the store? I'm like, hey, what are you talking about? You know, but the danger in all that is there's these terms floating around. It's still about application. Yeah. Like, you know, how is it going to be applied? How are we going to use machine learning uh, to really remove friction and but to make, you know, to take someone that visits your website and take them from, you know, the top of the funnel down to the bottom so that then that human person that knows immediately what they want can service them better. You know, and how do we so it's really the application of these things. And, uh, and tempering ourselves that might be on the front end of it that says, you know, before we move on to the next thing, let's figure out this one yeah. and, and apply it in a way that can be useful, um, unless it's fine. Yeah, no, that's so true. It's, I was watching this, um, I was watching a couple of the speakers that were out at Russell Brunson's um, event this year or last year at uh, ClickFunnels. And it may have even been Gary talking about the fact that like, he's like, everybody that's in this room, or maybe this was a YouTube, some YouTube conference or something. He was like, everybody in this room, like you're in it. Like, right. like you're so ingrained into all this social media and like, these conversations, these high level conversations we're having talking about all these different analytics on engagement and all these KPIs, all these different things. Like you have to remember that the average person in Greenville, South Carolina has no earthly idea what any of us are talking right. about. Yeah. And so it's yeah. so easy to feel like, oh, I'm behind, I gotta catch up, I gotta catch up yeah. when you're surrounding yourselves with people that that's all they do. Yep. So sometimes right. you just gotta take a step back and be like, what you know now is 99% more than the average person. And let's build from that and not always feel like because you're surrounded yourself with all these people that are experts in those areas that you are somehow like needing to catch up and needing to go find the new next thing. Um, It's so funny how I I get in those spaces sometimes where I'm like trying so many different things and then I like have a conversation with a friend that's not into this stuff and they're like, dude, I don't don't know what, I don't know what we just talked about for the last five minutes. It sounds cool, (laughs) but like, I don't know, I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, crap, I'm like, I'm I'm stuck in that, stuck in that zone. I do have one (laughs) uh, product or uh, innovation hack for, uh, for your viewers, Uh, you know, product hunt, the application. So if you're looking for the the applications and services that are out, Mm -hmm. there's an application called product hunt and uh, it gets votes and on the day of how, you know, innovative or helpful it is. But really? It's a great way to learn about applications and right services. Now. Yeah, so product, product hunt. hunt. Yep. 
So uh, this that's episode a good of the Sales Wolves podcast is brought to you <laughs> by, 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 free, free, by the uh, folks at Product Hunt. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, uh, can, uh, I'll build some content around. This. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, like a consumer reports for tech. It is, but it's daily. Okay. And so, huh. and it's I found some great. You know, I, we have a marketing stack, as I like to call it, at work. Yeah. You know, we use you know a handful of applications, and we've really developed that off of you know searching there but I find, but they've got everything from sales tools to lead generation different things and some of them are you know you know yeah. not helpful yeah uh, sure. and I'm sure someone put a lot of development time but there's yeah. some there's some of the the who's who's on there I mean even yeah. uh, when Airbnb updates their app they put it through product hunt now so huh. it's a good way good yeah. little, little, that's your tip of the day awesome um, so what so what else so this is kind of like the closing of the podcast. Where can yeah. people find you guys online and find your company and find out more about what you do? Like I said, a lot of these, we get a lot of comments back from people that are in um, car sales yeah. uh, in the automotive industry. So I'd love for them to be able to connect you guys with the dealerships that they work with, certainly, and then just everybody else to be able to find you and follow you. Yeah, Dom360, okay. you can Google that. We are on the major channels, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We're big on LinkedIn. Okay. We do blog post every uh, two a week through dom360.com okay. uh, and then andonovan.com. And how do you spell that? A-N-D, D-O-N-O-V-A-N. Yeah. So and Donovan and kind of our, our spiel there is we put our clients first. Hmm. So, uh, you know, for example, Taco Bell and Donovan. Or, uh, <laughs> got it, got you got know, it. so, uh, love that. yeah, we put them first, so that's in our DNA, client service. And then what about your, your personal stuff? You want to put that out there? Yeah, that'd be great. I'm uh, RyanAlford.com, uh, and then I'm uh, Ryan Alford on Instagram. Okay. Uh, I was there. Mm -hmm. I've been there for about eight years, so way before <laughs> anyone else. So that was one of my first. I got a good following there. Yeah. So I do a lot of personal fitness stuff yeah. and wine. Uh, that's how I learned yeah. about Gary Vee. He's actually yeah. back Watson Library awesome. back in the day. Awesome. Yeah. What about you? Well, I can't pull off the frequency you do, but I do. A, I do a vlog a month. Like, yeah, I guess. I guess I'm gonna be in the doghouse once I get down to these in 21, 2021. But uh, no, RobertDonovan.com is kind of my landing uh, landing page or whatever, and all the companies are there. I put all our press releases there, the vlogs there, everything's there. So it's a nice landing landing page for somebody to go to, get to all the companies and what have you. So. Yeah, and we appreciate we appreciate you yeah. having us on here. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it's good. Great. This is awesome. So, guys, um, hope you enjoyed Agent <laughs> Agent Twenty Twenty One. Hope you enjoyed <laughs> the Sales Wolves podcast. Um, I hope you got something out of that. I know a lot of you guys. We've been getting a ton of feedback from people that are in the automotive industry, so this was kind of perfect uh, setup for that. But uh, with that, this was episode fifty two of the Sales Wolves podcast. I am Tyler Harris. We've got Ryan Alford. Robert Donovan, and we all are the sales wolves. Ah, -hoo -hoo -hoo. Yes. All right. <laughs> all right. We'll see you soon. Nice. <laughs>